everybody, it's Shari Nicole. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is your first time viewing my channel. Um, first and foremost, the information that I am about to provide is just my experience, is not legal advice or tax advice in any way, shape or form. Make sure at the end of the day, after you do all your research and taking notes, um, however you please, always talk to a professional. Um, so that's my little disclaimer there. I am not giving you any kind of legal or tax advice. I'm just telling you my experience and what I had to do uh, as a small business owner to file my taxes and what I will be doing to file the 2021 taxes next year. So moving on to the information, um, some of the things that I've claimed so far um, is my car because I, I am a mobile business. So my car, uh, my phone, because I mean, everything nowadays is done from my phone. Like that's our, that's our office. <laughs> that's our desktop right there on our phone. Um, internet, because your Wi-Fi, your computer, your actual computer, uh, whether it be a laptop or a desktop, your printer or printers, however many you have to run your office, um, a percentage of your office space. So if you're paying rent, um, you can take a percentage of the square feet of your space, of your home, and um, well, really of the square feet of the office, and then take a percentage of that. I forgot how much, and then that will be um, that will that can you can write that part off. Um, any ads you may run, whether it be on social media. Uh, you know, getting your car magnets, if you have car magnets for whatever kind of business you have, or even the postal mail uh, flyers that you can, you know, send out through the post office. They can send on your behalf to all the numerous addresses that they have. Um, as well as, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? I think that's, so far I think that's it. So we got the car, my phone, computer, printer, gas or mileage um, I read somewhere that you have to do either or if you're gonna do gas and you need to make sure you're keeping in keeping track of all your receipts whether you're doing it um, paper or digital and then the flip side to that is also if you're gonna if you're choosing to keep track of your mileage then that's when you can add in all of the wear and tear on your vehicle again I'm not really clear on that part honestly I think I've claimed like both gas and my mileage I don't file my taxes just you know throw that out there I just provide and keep track of what I know I'm supposed to keep track of and then when they ask for it I give that to them so um but yeah and then that should be it for what I'm claiming so whatever you're claiming whatever you legally can claim make sure you're keeping great books being a small business owner you're no longer filing a w-2 most people are not i'm speaking to the people who no longer have w-2 jobs so i'm speaking to the 1099s and most importantly the 1040 schedule c's because that's when you gotta really keep good records of your books and um you just gotta really keep track of everything because it's not easy. <laughs> Schedule C's are not easy, okay? Um, so, when it comes to your car, you need, you're going to be asked for, um, asked what is the year of your car, what is your current mileage, um, and if you're paying on a loan, if the car is under a loan still, it's not paid off, then you're going to be asked about the interest, how much in interest are you paying on that car, and then your phone, you're going to be asked what's the sales tax you're paying on your phone, on your computer, on your desk, on your printer. And then again, like I said, um, the percentage of your rent, a.k.a. the office space, wherever your office space is, you're going to be putting in a percentage of that. Um, then your gas or mileage, like I said. So if you're getting your maintenance, make sure you're keeping track of oil change receipts, um, any tire changes you may need throughout the year. Whatever your car needs, just all the maintenance. Make sure you're keeping track of your receipts there. Um, what else? What else? They're also going to ask regarding the Schedule C part, the cost of goods sold. So first and foremost, they're going to know what type of inventory do you deal with. 
And then for the cost of goods sold, they're going to want to know your starting inventory, your purchases, labor, materials and supplies, any other costs you may have, and then your closing inventory. Now you can Google the equation to, you know, to get that, to get your closing inventory. Um, but it's simple. If you start, most people start, their starting inventory will be $0. So starting inventory for me, $0. Um, purchases so everything that you had to purchase to start up this business um, as well as the uh, labor for labor if you just if it's just you then I mean I put zero for my labor because you know I'm not I wasn't at that point where I could pay myself yet so zero for my labor and then materials and costs which might actually be a little more then the actual purchases or you can combine them again do do let let the tax uh professional let you know how to calculate all that okay even though i did get my degree in business administration and i do remember cost of goods sold and doing the inventory and all that kind of stuff but i wasn't really paying attention i was just trying to get my degree so that that's really the basics of everything um like i said just keeping track of every single thing keeping track of every single thing like really that's all i can really say about that <laughs> all your receipts you're gonna need um what are some stuff that i really did not keep track of um Pay attention to your sales tax because I don't know how it is in your state, but in Texas, we have to register with the um, comptroller when it comes to selling goods. At that time, I was selling goods. I had my, uh, and I still have my business, but it's being revamped to what I really created it for. Um, but I had Sweet Whole Health, and at that time, I was just selling body care products and candles and uh, what else I was selling. For the most part that was it so i ended up registering with the state of texas and the comptroller to you know for my customers to pay that sales tax when they checked out on my online website which was through shopify which is also if you have an online website you need to write down you need to write in your cost for shopify um any of your running costs you need to make sure you're keeping track of every single thing um so i had to pay sales tax of course it was only like 19 something dollars but that's when you have to pay like quarterly taxes so uh, make sure you keep in track of that keep track of that because at my other job that I used to work at we I would see state liens and federal tax liens and the state liens were the people who were not paying their quarterly taxes okay <laughs> you'll be surprised which businesses out here are not paying their quarterly taxes and that money gets it gets up there and then Texas charges hefty interest okay they even charge interest on your child support payments but that's neither here nor there um, so yeah I'm just here this video is just really really quick um, a lot of people don't know what all they need to be keeping track of or uh, I don't know taxes just scare people because I mean the IRS makes it scary because if you don't pay then you got to face penalties and that penalties could also include imprisonment like some celebrities we know so nobody wants to be on that end of the stick so just make sure you have all your um, ducks in a row keeping track of all your paperwork have a great filing system be organized and um, yeah just run your business like a true business person man or woman and um so when it comes to tax time you won't be trying to shuffle in trying to add up some last minute stuff trying to see how much you did you really spend going back through bank statements trying to see if you can just as you spend um as the maintenance comes as that come as that come make sure you're just writing it down and then filing it away in a uh place you can find it like I said be organized so next year when you're filing taxes for this year you could just everything's in a folder or on a folder in your on a computer and you just send that to your tax professional whoever's gonna file your taxes 
if it's not yourself. Um, and so you won't have to be worried about anything. But let me lastly say, that's just the filing of your taxes, IRS taxes. But again, if you have an LLC, you got to deal with state taxes. Um, and even with, I believe, federal we have to be making sure we keep a percentage of all the income you earn. Make sure you're taking a percentage. Um, I think they say the safe zone is 30% of every income that you make. Set that 30% of that aside to pay taxes at the end of the year or quarterly, however your schedule is going to be set up. Um, yeah, don't get caught slipping out here, okay? So anyway, guys, that's it. It wasn't, sorry, my video wasn't really that you know, pristine and organized. I just wanted to put that out there for those who, you know, are curious or are working their way to being self-employed or um, just, you know, recently started and they just want to know because CPAs and all the other accountants can be pretty expensive. So it's great to know just a little, just to have an idea, just a little bit on your own for free. <laughs> before you speak to a professional um, and go from there. But more than likely, you know, as my business grows, as I grow, I will definitely have, uh, I probably will have some tax professionals. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, my next thing is to learn how to do my own taxes. Um, that's what I want to do because I believe in saving coins in every way possible. So... Thank y'all for watching. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you comment. Comment any tips, advice you want to give to either myself or other viewers who will come along after you and watch this video and have to, you know, they have questions that maybe I can't answer. Maybe you can. Um, make sure you put your little disclaimer in there if you're not a legal, you know, if you're not an attorney or if you're not a tax um, professional. Put your little disclaimer there because people out here crazy. They'll say, well, so-and-so told me. No, I didn't tell you anything. I told you my story. That's it. Period. <laughs> I didn't tell you what to do. I told you my story. Okay? I, ain't, I didn't advise you. Um, but, yeah, thank y'all for watching. Subscribe and stay tuned for the next videos. I have more videos rolling out very, very soon. Um, so, until next time, y'all, peace.